Welcome to Think Big with Dan and Kasim. Join host Dan Melnick and Kasim Masood as they explore big ideas, limitless possibilities, and engage with visionaries, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders who dare to dream big, get inspired, motivated, and find practical tips for personal growth. Think big, dream bigger, and ignite your potential. All right, welcome to Think Big with Dan and Kasim, and our guest today is Steve. So, Steve, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, tell us where you live and what you do for a living. Absolutely. So, I'm Steve Benson, and uh, I live here in uh, southern Spain right now. Although I uh, I have spent most of my my time over the last 25 years or so in California, but uh, I just moved to Spain recently because uh, the company that I run, Badger Maps, its largest office is here in southern Spain. Awesome. So can you just tell us more about um, Badger Maps, what exactly it is, and how you got the idea for the company? Yeah, sure. Um, So what Badger Maps does is, first, who we do it for. It's for field salespeople, field service people, people that are delivering things, going around, moving around out in the field. And, uh, you know, if you're a salesperson, for example, you have lots of customers you have to go visit. And so we'll connect in with your CRM system like Salesforce or HubSpot, where the place where you keep all your customer data, we'll connect into that and bring it, show all that, that, that data and information about your customers in a mapping environment on your mobile device, your iPhone or your Android phone, and give you the ability to do things like see everything on a map, colorize by account characteristics that are interesting, help you figure out who to focus on who's important, who you want to see tomorrow, who you want to see next Thursday, uh, given that there's often constraints on around that, like you have to see this person at 10 o'clock and this person at two o'clock. So we have like routing systems and optimization systems that are really helpful scheduling systems. So, so a salesperson or whoever is in the field can really build out their schedule in a way that makes sense, focus on the most important customers. Awesome. So can you just give me an example like of a good use case, but, you know, without mentioning a customer name, but I guess like somebody who's using you may like in a certain verb yeah. where this would be adding lots of value. Sure. Uh, common place. I guess there's the two groups. There's field service people and field sales people. And then there's a bunch of random use cases where people are going out in the field, going to different places and, and need to be organized about it. But the most common is field sales people. So imagine like you know, a medical device salesperson, a pharmaceutical salesperson, someone who sell, sells or rents construction equipment, these types of face-to-face industries. But, you know, if you walk down Main Street anywhere in the world, it's it's like tire stores and dentist offices and con- you know convenience stores, field sales, restaurants, field salespeople go to these places and do business with those business owners. And then the public is the end consumer usually. But so any, a lot of stuff in a lot of industries passes through the hands of field salespeople. And so that's kind of who we help. And we're a small company. We have 85 employees and uh, just uh, offices in Europe and Asia and just one office in Europe, one office in Asia, and one office in America. For sure. So, like, I mean, for example, like one of my um, really good friends is a medical sales rep, right? So, you know, he's selling injectables and he works for a pharmaceutical company. So, you mm-hmm. know, he has to travel to different hospitals. So, I guess, like, how exactly would he get value from your product? Sure. Yeah. I mean, that, and that's exactly the kind of sales rep that uses this. Um, uh, and we've got some in, actually injectables, specifically companies that uh, that, that use this aesthetic in, injectables or different types of medicine. But basically, you know, hit, a part of his job is to get in front of these doctors that are choosing between this injectable, like let's just say Botox and another injectable that does something similar, uh, or maybe it's a new thing. And so they want to educate the doctors or the hospital buyers or the doctor or doctor's office buyers about it. And so he has a territory, let's just say, you know, Western Dallas is his territory. And he has 342 doctors in Western Dallas that are are the types of doctors that would use this type of injectable. And that is his territory. And so his job is to figure out where are all these doctors? How do I get in front of them? What's their schedule? You know, are, are they at this practice on Monday and Tuesday and this practice on Wednesday and, and Thursday and golfing on Friday? Where are they? When are they there? How can I get in front of them? How can I build relationships with them? How can I then discuss the value of my injectable over my competitors' injectables? And uh, and how basically can I get this territory using more injectables uh, 
is is what his job is. So what Badger does is we take those 340 doctors that are in in the territory, put them on a map, colorize them by whatever characteristics he he has about them. Maybe he knows how many injectables they're currently using. Maybe he knows specifically in the pharmaceutical industry they have really good data because they buy it from pharmacies around how much uh how even if they're not buying from you how much of how many scripts of this nature are being prescribed by by this specific doctor or out of this office they they have all the, they, they buy they have all that data so as a sales rep your job is to just maximize who's who the the, the sales across that territory so your he's your friend is looking at his week here and he's like, well, next Tuesday I've got to drive out to you know Lubbock, Texas here. Who's on the way? Who's on the way home? I'm meeting this guy at ten, but who else is important on the way? And he's like, well, I'm going to pass thirty doctors close enough, but like which eight do I want to see? What's that schedule look like? How do I coordinate all that? And so we have scheduling tools, routing tools. That's a that problem is fairly complex to figure out by hand and in a spreadsheet and a, you know in like in CRMs are don't don't do this out of the box you have to get it you know you add us on to do it but with our with with this tool that we've built it's very smooth and and efficient and easy to to for a rep like that like like him to figure this out and then when when he's in the field we guide him from place to place you know we, we're integrated with ways and google maps so we actually you know we, we just take him right through and then also prompt to take note, take the right notes that is that he's required to take when he's in the field. Because so his company wants him to capture certain data into the CRM, and so we make it really easy in our system to capture that data and send it off to the CRM without having to like log into his computer, et cetera, to get capture all this information. So those are all the things that we do. That's amazing. So what would you say is the biggest challenge that you face in your business today? Biggest challenge, you know, it's it's funny. I was just talking about this. It, I think the biggest challenge that we face, it, as silly as it sounds, is just how noisy the world is. Like there are five thousand marketing and sales applications that your friend, who is a perfect fit for us, that he could be looking at right now, and maybe he's figuring out five of them, and he he may not. He probably has never heard of this. You know, ninety. I don't know. Probably ninety percent of field salespeople haven't. Like. You know, I'll, I'll, but so a he probably never doesn't even know this exists. But he does it by he spends a half hour every day doing what we do in minutes by hand, right? But then even if even if presented with the concept that hey this exists, they're like ah oh, it's going to be hard to learn. I'm already trying to learn these five things, and I've got to get the CRM set up right before I can even use this. And and so it's just getting getting the the time and the mental bandwidth. Um, it's just such a flood of of uh, tech right now. It's like well should I should I be buying this or should I buy like an AI email tool? I mean, they both would be useful, but like I can't, there's only so much time to evaluate new things and figure this out. And so I think that's just the noisiness of the world and how much great technology has been created in the last decade is, is, is one of our biggest challenges. Like no one that tries our product out is like, oh, that this isn't, this on a time basis or a money basis, this pays itself back right away. Like immediately I know I'm getting value from it, but it took me three years to buy it. Because I just I've, I've been busy, <laughs> like I've had I've had other things going on. So I think I think that's actually um, our biggest challenge for sure. But I guess like let's just say right, like my friend works for like a large pharmaceutical company, right? Like a mm-hmm. multi-billion-dollar company. So how would you go about selling to someone in those scenarios? Many pharmaceutical companies are huge, right? So it's like. You know, obviously, even if the sales rep wants to use it, you might have other decision makers, you know, to get the company to pay for it. So it's like, what is that? Like, I guess, like, who is your, you know, ideal TAM in this situation? How do you even go about, like, getting in front of the right people to make sure that, that this deal gets closed. It's it's uh it's a process, right? And and the process looks very different in different places. Like so at a big insurance company like that or a big pharma company like that. Insurance is another industry where we're with big big companies that are hard to hard to navigate, but our our stuff is really useful for. But pharma companies, it can just be that one sales rep starts using us, right? Like one rep can just start using us and getting value out of it. And we see that a lot where it's like one rep starts and like six months later, his team, his team, his, his boss is like, this is awesome. We should get this for the team. And so his team buys it. Um, and maybe it just stops right there or, but at the same, at, at other times it'll float throughout through the whole organization. We had, we did a, a, a thousand person, uh, team, uh, I guess we set them up towards the end of, uh, last year, 2022, not 2024. And, um, they, it was just one guy bought it. And like, I think it was like September, October, 
And then like they then by December, they had decided like early December, they had decided, hey, we want this for the Southeast region. You the, the whole Southeast region is, you know, it's it's 200 guys and we want we want this for all of them. And it, but it's it was enough money that like the someone higher in the organization had to sign for it. And it lands on their desk and they're like, you don't need this or everyone needs this. Which is it? Because like it doesn't make sense that you're bus- like the Southeast is the same as the Northeast. Have you talked to people in the Northeast about this? And they're like, no, but you know, it's their, it's their problem. <laughs> like, like, but we just want this for us. And so within the course of like, so the, the deal was like on the one yard line, right. With, with, uh, with the Southeast and it got, you know, they called timeout basically. And, and so we, we started, we, we started a whole new sales cycle, but with the whole organization listening and within like, two weeks so before the end of the year they they had signed uh for the whole for the whole organization so it ended up being like a thousand a thousand users which, which is a big deal for us right that's a that's a large team and there are there are larger teams in the world but that's a large one for us yeah for sure um and uh and and so that you know so i guess that's that's one way it can fly around fast like that it can also fly around super slow right like it can We've got, you know, team companies for like this team and that team use it, and, you know, little, little sprinklings of people. And a lot of times when a company buys it for their hundred seat team or whatever, 50 people are already using it as individuals. And so that, for sure. like, and that, and that, so we do see that a lot. And then we also see just like a company actually have an initiative in this area, like a sales operations person or a sales executive is like, Hey, this looks like it would create a lot of value. Let's have like a, a buying cycle around this. Let's put it on RFP. Let's think it through, pick the best vendor, yada, yada. And so we, we do see that as well, but a lot less frequently than like the, the float around way the 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 land and expand i call it um because and i think that's because the person that really feels the pain and knows they're being inefficient is the sales rep who's like i just zigzagged around dallas and saw four people but like if i had done them in the right order i could have seen eight today right like it's just like they feel the 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 inefficiency and and it's a really it seems stupid but it's really hard the human mind is very bad at these this type of geographic optimization and like sketch layering a spreadsheet on top of a calendar on top of a in, importance matrix of who is important to see right now it, it's a lot of data to juggle and and keep straight for sure so obviously now we're in 2024 so for 2024 to be successful like what are you looking at in the pipeline for this year? Well, I mean, I think uh, it's a it's a fun time for us because we have a new, a fun and frustrating time for us because we have a, our, the new version of our product is now released, but in beta, uh, which is code word for it still sucks. But our, our, and our, our last product, which has been, you know, in the, it's been released for 10 years is very hardened, but a lot of people are waiting for the new product. It does some important things that, um, that people, you know, are, our, our customers have been waiting for and been asking for for a while, but they're fairly difficult. It's been, but this version's literally been like in the hopper for three years being, you know, cranked away on, which we, no one gets any value from when it's just like sitting in, you know, getting built. Right. And so we're, this, this is now released and it's available and everyone's like, Hey, but wait, it doesn't do what the last one does on this thing. We're like, yeah, this is, this is still in beta. We've got, you know, <laughs> over the next year, we're going to add all those things to this new version, but it's a success for us this year is, is getting the key pieces in place. And they should, they're, they're, the engineers should have this, have it out by, by the end of Q1, like the key things in place that people can really get the value from the product um, that they're looking to get. And, uh, but now's a, now's a, in, now's a tip toey on eggshells time because it's like we're like okay it's here check it out and they're like is, is it gonna do this we're like yeah yeah and like in like two months just and you're not gonna use it until then so you know like but, but it's coming it's well, coming. like I, I mean i mean i guess like in terms of revenue even if you, if you can mention kind of like a um, percentage like what would like we're like you know what are you guys looking at in terms of increase from 23 to um, 24 we're we're doing just over six million a year, six I guess maybe we, maybe six and a half million a year now in terms of run rate, and uh, we'd like to get it to like seven and a half, eight by the end of the year. What do you think is like the biggest obstacle in the way? Is it this product that you mentioned, or is it um, something else? No, I mean, 
I, yeah, I think we'll do that. Uh, I think it's a reasonable goal. I like to set goals that like 70% of the time or so you're going to hit. And <laughs> it's more fun in a, in a small company. It's, it's dishear- it's, it's disheartening to set goals and miss them. So I like to set right. them to be like a stretch, but not like too like, it's like, yeah, like that's par, you know? Like, so I think, I think we'll hit that one in terms of, you know, what holds, what would hold us back? I mean, I, uh, I don't know. I guess the biggest thing that concerns me is like the economy tail spinning here. You know, there's there's uh, a lot of things feel overvalued and tippy, although when a lot of the economic indicators actually look a lot better than people feel like they are. It's like we're right. we're nervous about we're nervous, but it's about nothing. You actually look at the numbers. And you're like, oh, actually, this looks pretty good. But then we, the what, day, are, I mean, what are we worried about? Yeah, but people <laughs> still need I mean, companies still need to sell products, especially if you're working with insurance or pharma, I mean, those are industries that still have, you know, it's not like they're commodities. I mean, these are things that people need. So, but yeah. I guess I'm curious, right? In terms of like how you've gotten to where you are, right? I mean, obviously 6 million plus run rate is, is pretty impressive, but you know, even now, even going forward, like what has been the sales process? Like how have you gotten in front of, like you mentioned, obviously like one rep can find you, but do you just like reach people on LinkedIn and say, Hey, like this is our product, you know, even if they're like a, like a sales rep, like at a large company, how have you gotten in front of your current customers uh the the most important thing for us is our is our seo like i think we're pretty established as like the player in this space and like we've just been around for the longest and we're the largest and you know we we've talked about it the most and you know from an seo perspective google can tell who we are and and directs a lot of traffic our way like if you go on the internet and start typing in words that describe this they're going to point you to us you know if you're like oh routing iPhone for sales, you know, like it, it's going to be like, oh, you, you, we see what you want. You want this. That's probably our most important, uh, just that, just that organic traffic from Google, not paid ads from Google, but organic paid ads are important too. We do, we get some stuff from those, although they're so, so expensive. It's hard to say if they're, <laughs> if we make them, yeah, if they're ever profitable, but certainly the free stuff from Google, just like our SEO is one of our bigger ways of, of getting people. The biggest way we get people is people go to Google and type our name or something like our name because they've heard about us and land on our page. So uh, that, so not describing the concept, but just saying, you know, Badger maps, Badger mapping, Badger sales, something like that. That lands you on our, that, that'll get you to us. And and so we think that our, we don't know why people do that exactly. We don't know where they hear about us. Um, attribution on that stuff is very difficult. I mean, obviously, you know, I've like, we've been featured in a lot of things and I've done a lot of podcasts, but I, I, I actually think the most important thing is not stuff like that, but it's actually just word of mouth. The great thing about having salespeople as your customers is they're excellent communicators and they have a lot of friends. And so they tend to talk amongst themselves. And so uh, I I think that a lot of salespeople hear about this because they have a friend who's like, oh, there's totally an easier way to do that. Check this out. And but what and about that, like, do you guys not do like cold outreach on LinkedIn, for example, or cold email? We don't do any cold outreach on LinkedIn. We, sh- we I've always wanted to. Uh, we we did it early on, by, but it was just so, it was so by hand, and it's you know it's it's hard to find someone who has an interest in this right now. Um, you know, and like and line that up. I think you run into a lot of people that are like, "That's interesting," but I'm busy. It's such a noise. These things are so noisy. Um, right. Right. So it's, yeah, you know, it, it's so you're just looking for essentially someone who's frustrated, goes on Google. I'm very annoyed about this process. And like, how do I do this better? And then you, you're going to come up essentially. Yeah, I think that's the most common thing. I mean, sometimes people, you know, there's there's all these ratings, things like, you know, G2 and like right. people could, might be looking for looking at different solutions that are for field salespeople on G2 and come across it or they're looking for or they're looking up our specific thing. And there's partners and stuff, too, like. It, the CRMs, they they have all these consulting firms that like help deploy their products um, because it's complicated. It's complex and takes expertise to deploy a CRM successfully. And those CRM uh, companies, they know who we are, and so they'll direct people to us because like they and you know they they're like, hey, yeah, oh, like they set up someone's CRM and then they're complaining that you know oh the field sales guys are complaining about this because it's they don't want to log into the their laptop to update this stuff or hey they they they've got this problem with their routes but all the data is in in hubspot how do you how do they build a route or a schedule with that like is there a 
is there an app for that? And, and those guys, I think, often know about us just because, you know, that, I mean, it's their job to know everything about Salesforce or, or HubSpot or whatever, right? Whatever ecosystem they're in. And so I think they direct people to us. But but I, I, I when we ask, the most common thing people say is, I found you on Google. And we do ask, we ask everybody and like, you know, capture the data in one place to like, you know, figure it figure it out from the CRM. In, in the CRM, we can see where the sales are coming from. And people are invariably, it's like heard about it from a friend or colleague, or it's heard about it from Google. So uh, that's, that's, uh, and I, and actually we, we haven't even had any Google ads running for a little while and that nothing changed. So it's, it's. Uh, yeah. Google ads. <laughs> I mean, it's not, I'm not saying that they, they don't work, but you know, the can be, I mean, especially if you're like sort of only, or main player in the space, they're not as you know they're not as relevant. So I guess if somebody watching this wanted to reach out to you, do you mind sharing your website or social media? I guess best oh, way, yeah, of course, to get in touch uh, with you. So the best way, if, if they're interested in in Badger, uh, is just to go to uh, website. You can you can Google us Badger Maps. Uh, the the website is badgermapping.com. Um, if it's me, you're trying to get a hold of uh, LinkedIn is probably the best way to do it. Just uh, if you look up Steve Benson Badger, um, I'll I'll pop right up. Awesome. Well, Steve, thank you so much for your time today. We're rooting for you to have a very successful 2024. Thanks, Dan. I really appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye.